ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Very comfortable evening here at the Meadowlands as Rex Ryan and the Jets get a chance to erase the disappointment of the blown lead at Lambeau last week. Both of these teams one and one rare meeting and an odd situation for the Jets who will get the ball first. The Bears won the toss, deferred the option to the second half, so the Jets will receive here. I say odd, John, because it's three straight weeks for the Jets against NFC North teams. Green Bay last week, Detroit next week, Chicago this week. So it's been hard to prepare here at the start of the season. Very hard, and this young Jets secondary is going to see a lot of great quarterbacks in the coming weeks. Robbie Gold kicks it off to get us underway here at MetLife Stadium. Salim Hakeem has tremendous speed, but gets taken down before he can kick into a fifth gear at the 20-yard line. We talked about Geno Smith at the beginning. He's played very well in this stadium. Second round pick, the starter from the beginning of his rookie year. And, John, I alluded to it. Marty Morningwig is gaining more confidence, the offensive coordinator, in his quarterback. Yes, he is, Mike. You're going to see some no-huddle offense tonight. They're going to empower Geno Smith to do some things that he gets to on his own. Opening drive starts from the 21, and Gino looking to throw, covered downfield, so he takes off and gets right at the first down mark at the 31-yard line. And so the sideline personnel there for the Bears took a heavy hit, and so did Gino on the white, and the flag's down. It's going to be a bootleg off your right side, and watch number 99, Lamar Houston. Houston. Defense, number 93, laid hit out of bounds against the quarterback. 15-yard penalty at the end of the run, first down. Foot on the uh, border there, and that's the 15. It's a big gain. Will Sutton right out of the gate. He's starting because Jeremiah Ratliff is out. That's the rookie's first NFL start. That play game 26 with the flag. And from the 46, Trying to get the screens, but right, it's intercepted. And all the way is Ryan Mundy. Monday night football. Touchdown, Chicago. That's a bad play by Geno Smith. When you throw a screen pass, you have to see the throw. See the throwing lane before you let it go. That time they fake a bubble screen to the left. He turns around to throw the screen to Chris Johnson. And you're going to see Monday come on the left side of your screen for an easy interception. The Bears had four turnovers last week against the San Francisco 49ers. Lance Briggs told us last night, we need to score a touchdown with a turnover. They were listening. What a play by Monday. 45 yards on the return. It is his first NFL touchdown. Robbie Gold adds the extra point. Monday one West Virginia Mountaineer intercepts another in Geno Smith for the game's opening points Well, it's a designer screen you see it every week They're gonna fake a bubble screen to Curly and they're gonna try to throw a screen to Chris Johnson on the backside But Geno has to flash his eyes and see the throw Ryan Monday saw it all the way the Jets had a big tendency coming in here Mike they love to throw screens to Chris Johnson and use his perimeter screen uh, speed. And you have to credit this Bear defense for reading their tip sheet. Terrible way to start the game for Geno Smith. John, we talked to Monday last night, and one of the things the Bears had issues with last year was their safety play. They had eight different safeties in their training camp. Six of them had starting experience. Somebody had to emerge. And while they were looking for that second guy, when we were at the Bears camp, they identified Monday right away as someone whose ability and communication skills fit, and he was going to be one of the two safeties. Been around a lot Monday, played for the Steelers, played for the Giants, leads this Bear team in tackles, and he just made a big impact play. The team will take it out. Salim Hakeem knocked down at the 11-yard line. 
Sonaris Perry on the tackle. So a good early start for the Bears. To Brickishaw Ferguson, Nick Mangle. They've been together for about nine years. Real fortresses on that Jets offensive line. Meantime, the players handling the ball as well. Decker, the wide receiver, the hamstring injury. We'll watch closely. He is going. Ivory and Johnson, the two backs who will handle it the most. You'll see Curley in the slot a lot. Along with David Nelson. One thing Marty Morningwig likes to do early, John, a lot of formations, run a lot of different plays and deceive the opposition. In the hands of Chris Johnson, he'll run for three to the 14-yard line, and Lance Briggs comes up with the tackle. We're going to run a lot of these zone reads tonight. We're just going to lock down. We're going to read the end man on the line of scrimmage, and whatever Willie Young does, Geno Smith is going to read. That time, he... Gave the ball to the back, but you're going to see that common scheme several more times tonight. Chris Ivory now joins Chris Johnson, both lead running backs in the game. Time for Smith, and he's got Ivory. He has the first down. It's a Chicago's 31, 32 yard line, let's call it. Chris Conti comes up with a tackle. This Chris Ivory is hard to tackle watch this little check down off the right side of the screen just a simple play action pass plenty of time good pass protection but chris ivory makes as much after contact as any back in football and i'm sure statistics back that up it is 17 on that one chris johnson of course the former Tennessee Titan, who had a 2,000-yard season back in 2009. Look at that Bears defense. Will Sutton got the penalty earlier. I mentioned he's starting because Jeremiah Ratliff is out with a concussion. Tony Houston, Paya, and Allen. Jonathan Bostic starts at linebacker. Shea McClellan out with Williams and the longtime Bear Briggs. You've already seen Ryan Mundy's work. Kyle Fuller starts at center. Michael Vick in the game for the Jets. Takes the direct snap, and he's pulled down from behind. Now a game of about three. E.J. Williams and Fuller stop Vic. That was his sixth snap of the season. That's a designed running play. They're going to block down and they're going to pull linemen and try to get Michael Vick running to his left on the edge. That time the Bears did a nice job of containing it. Corey Fully, their Fuller, their rookie right corner, continues to tackle at a high level. Geno Smith back in for third and three. Four man rush, the pass is deflected and nearly intercepted on the deflection by Lamar Houston. So we're going to move inside tonight, John, to play defensive tackle in a bunch of situations. This is what Chicago does on defense. Double A gap blitz. Two linebackers between the center and the guard. Where does Nick Mangold go? Where does the back go? They're not decisive. There's penetration, a tip pass, and so far, this Jet offense struggling. Fans are reacting as Santonio Holmes, the former Jet, for four years until last year, and urging the crowd on as Ryan Quigley punks it away. And Holmes calls for it and makes the fair catch on a 44-yard punt by the second-year man, Quigley. Jake Cutler's team is up seven. He hasn't touched the ball yet. He will in a moment. ESPN's Monday Night Football brought to you by GMC. Enter the Never Say Never sweepstakes for a chance to win a 2015 GMC vehicle at gmc.com slash NFL. By T-Mobile and by autotrader.com. Land a great deal on your perfect car at autotrader.com. Giants blue on Sunday, Jets green on Monday. Doesn't happen with a snap of a finger. A lot of folks had to turn this place around. This uh, multi-use stadium. Some of the workers on these busy weekends sleep, eat, and shower here at the stadium. So it looks like the house of the Jets on a Monday night. Jay Cutler takes over from his own 17. On first down, they throw quick. It's high for Alshon Jeffrey. And incomplete. John talked about that finest hour for Jay Cutler last week. Remember, he signed the seven-year deal in the offseason. He has been uh, with the Bears here for a good amount of time, getting them to the playoffs once. Now the deal, the offense in place, can he continue to build on that 
and get this team to the postseason for the second time in his tenure. It all starts with pass protection tonight. Can Jay Cutler decipher this jet defense, all the blitzes and all the disguises in the noise? Toss it to Forte, on the edge, great read, nowhere to go, Darren Wells, who's starting for the injured Dean Milner. That play had no chance, penetration from the corner position, you're going to see off your left side, walls just flash, and there's nobody to Toss account to for him, and that's a loss of three. Edge. This is where Rex Ryan loves to bring pressure, third and long, after the play by Walls. You see Evan Britton is checked in as a tight end. He's an offensive tackle. They're looking to get added protection for Jay Cutler in these obvious third down situations. Play clock running down. And timeout taken from the sideline. Their sideline saw the play clock running down. Personnel in late. Chicago, their first. Third and 14 coming up when you come back. Early pick six has given the Bears the edge, 7-0. Jets fans trying to get behind their defense as Chicago faces third and 14. Santonio Holmes, the lone receiver to the right of Cutler. Showing pressure. Let's see if the Bears max the protection. Cutler pressured and got rid of it in time. Short game for Forte. And it'll be three and out as David Harris makes the tackle for New York. Rex Ryan will drive you crazy. That's what we talked about in the pregame. Show Jay Cutler pressure. And on the snap of the ball, everybody retreats into a zone coverage. You keep the tight end, number 83, Bennett, in the block. You have to check the ball down, and down goes the back. Excellent job by the New York Jet defense. Patrick O'Donnell is a rookie out of Miami of Florida. Jalen Saunders receiving a rookie out of Oklahoma. Jet bluffing pressure right over the center. And it looks like there was movement on that Bears front. Jerome Boger is our referee tonight. Ball start. Offense, number 21. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Man who scored the touchdown, you can excuse that. He gave you seven points. <laughs> O'Donnell got pressure. They blocked one of his last week against San Francisco. Almost got that. It is muffed by Saunders, who was unable to get back on it. And the Bears recover. Ahmad Dixon down there as the rookie Saunders muffed the catch. And the Bears will get the ball back. Terrible mistake. They almost blocked the punt off the edge. Might have even got a piece of it. And Saunders just misjudges the ball. And there for the recovery is Ahmad Dixon, the ex Baylor Bear. And it sets up Cutler. Heads up for play action after a sudden change. From the 40, Cutler loaded, looking, sending the shot downfield, under throw and incomplete, trying to get Jeffrey. Walls in coverage, but a flat. I think Cutler tried to back shoulder that throw and. Pass interference, defense, number 30. Grabbing the arm of the receiver. Foul to foul, automatic first down. Blitz off the edge, it's one-on-one -on -one coverage. That's Jay Cutler's training in this game. <laughs> I didn't see it. It's the other way around, actually. It's Jeffrey who grabs the receiver of the DB, not Walls who grabbed Jeffrey's arm. That's a miss there. I didn't see that at all. Keep an eye on Marshall. Go-to red zone target is number 15 on the edge against Antonio Allen. 33 yards on that penalty. <laughs> oh, 
First and goal. Cutler looking Marshall's way. That time he overthrows him. It's Antonio Allen at six foot one, trying to stay with that outstanding red zone target. There's no question about this game plan. <laughs> hey, Cutler, if it's one on one coverage, throw the ball to Alshon Jeffrey or give a hand signal to Brandon Marshall. Just a subtle hand signal by Cutler. It's a high point fade, and Antonio Allen has surprising athleticism. He's got very good size. He was an excellent safety. He's played dime linebacker. He has ball skills and length. And they like to match up with he and these big bear receivers. Play clock running down. Cutler telling him, I need it now. He's got it. And on the slam, Marshall couldn't hang on. And it's Walls over there covering on the corner. The simple slant pattern. Cutler tried to throw a dead ball and stop Marshall before the safety arrived. You must be careful against this young safety, Mike. This Calvin Pryor will smack you. Third down. Expect the Jets to drop everybody in coverage. They love maximum zone from a pressure look. This has been a guaranteed seven so often to Marshall. The last nine times they've had first and goal. Cutler looking at his two big receivers. Now is flush. Fires to the back. Caught for the touchdown by Martellus oh. Bennett. Unbelievable. Flag, flag down back by Cutler where he threw it. Personal foul. Rough in the passer. Defense number 91. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. That was a touchdown, wasn't it? I, I thought it was, and now they're telling Jerome Boger that he missed the fact that it was a touchdown. Watch it, Jets. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Touchdown. Three-man rush. The, the Jets bail, and Sheldon Richardson took two steps. Jerry Austin says it's a penalty, so I'll agree with you, Jerry. Jerry, our referee from the Super Bowl, twice up here in the booth. Extra point added by Robbie Gold. The, the Jets' mistakes here in the first 5.06 of this one, a factor. Although the pass interference call against Walls was a tough one to go against New York, they make him pay with a touchdown pass to Bennett. 14-0 Bears. Not exactly a great offensive start. Number six's offense has six plays and six yards. But a pick six thrown by Geno Smith of the Jets. And then the muffed punt by the rookie Jalen Saunders plus the pass interference. And all of that leads to 14 nothing quickly. Jets in a hole five minutes and six seconds in. As they went for that ball after the muffed punt, Saunders' shoulder was banged up. Robbie Gold picks it. And a wise decision by Bilal Powell not to take it out. Well, take a look at Bennett at the top of the screen. He's going to catch the ball, but the Jets are showing pressure. They're bailing out. They're rushing three. They're playing a prevent maximum zone coverage. Rex Ryan can't win. Last week, he played man-to-man -man coverage, and his corners got beat. And so far, I've just seen him play maximum zone and get beat. It's tough to play when you don't have a lot of confidence in your corners. You have those receivers in the red zone, too. And Bennett's the one who gets them. So the Jets need to do something here offensively. Chris Ivory with the carry. John, this, this is one of those tough ones. You get this uh, real shot to the system early on. You're down 14 nothing. It's when you have veteran play callers. You need to remind, stick to your game plan. It's very early in this game. They're continuing the no-huddle offense. Let's see what Geno Smith's made of. He brought him back five times to win last year in the fourth quarter. He showed a lot of mental toughness. After the gain of four, they'll go back to the air on second down. And Smith throws across the middle his tight end, Jeff Cumberland. To catch the 35-yard line. D.J. Williams and Jonathan Bostic, the linebackers, bring him down. It's an old West Coast principle. A little reverse pivot, a little six-step set step set up, and Cumberland comes inside on a basic cross, and Gino throws a nice ball. Hey, 35-yard line. It'll be the run for Ivory for four yards. So, John, you have these two backs, Chris Ivory 
who was undrafted as a rookie, really opened eyes at New Orleans at 716 yards that rookie season. Draft day trade last year brought him to the Jets, where he led the team in rushing in 2013. No doubt, and he had a 71-yard run against the Raiders in the opening game. He has finishing speed, and he can run you over. Physical back. Gain of five, it's right back to Ivory. Cumberland, the tight end, with one block, but nowhere else to go. Lance Briggs bringing the Bears defense with D.J. Williams, no game. Lance Briggs might be his last year with the Chicago Bears, but I thought he came to life last week against the 49ers in the second half, and he's known for these kind of hits. One of the best downhill linebackers the Bears have ever seen. 12 years in the league. Seven Every down. times to the Pro Bowl, yep. Third down, so Bilal Powell checks in as the Jets back. And Smith has three downfield looking for Decker. Goes up, took a big hit. Did he hold on to the 40? Yes, it's ruled a catch. Ball came out later. 19-yard gain in the first down. I like a receiver that'll go inside, catch the ball away from his body, and show no fear. That time, Decker went up and got it with Conti beating down on him from the free safety position. Great concentration. Nice job protecting the ball in the crowd. Decker a question mark coming in. Hamstring injury out at the end of the game in Green Bay. We watched him practice Saturday. Look looked pretty good. He's out for the moment. That's Jeremy Curley. Does a lot on the edge here for the Jets. But the Bears know that too. And Jonathan Bostic erased that one. Bostic has his hands full, Mike. He's been playing in the sub package only with the injury to Shea McClellan, which you pointed out earlier. He's back in the base defense at the Sam linebacker position. That's the strong side in this pair defense. That time, he showed good pursuit, made a nice open field tackle. Second and nine. And Smith again with time. Finds Ivory for the first down and more. Ivory almost lost the ball, but he hangs on. Takes it to the 17-yard line. Gain of 24. I like what Gino did. A little trap pass. They're trying to take a shot down the field. The Bears read it quite well, and Ivory just checks right out of the backfield to your right side. Play action pass. Taking a shot down the field. Good check down, and off goes Ivory. And once again, he punishes people after the catch. Good one-two combo of backs with Chris Johnson and Chris Ivory. Jets in the red zone. Ivory got out of the first tackle by Bostic. And maybe they'll give him a yard with his forward progress around the 15-yard line. So far, these Bears have done a nice job against that zone read. And if you could stop that play early, a lot of times offensive coordinators will get away from it. And I know Jared Allen is sick of seeing that play. He wants to rush the passer, and to do that, they have to stop these early down runs and get the Jets behind in the chains. It's a both of their tight ends tight to the bottom of the screen. Smith covered downfield, keeps the play alive for the moment, and then is brought down Ego Ferguson. The rookie out of LSU comes up with his first NFL sack. Gino held the ball a long way. These are two rookie players. There's Ego Ferguson at the nose tackle position. Working against Nick Mangold. Gino's got to find somewhere to go with the football, either complete or incomplete, but you cannot hold the ball that long. Can't take a 13-yard loss there. Saw that last week as well. Third and 22. It's a four-man rush. Sets the screen. Here's Cumberland, the tight end. Can't get through the lineman who rallied back to the ball. And from here, a 43-yard field goal attempt is coming. You know, Jared Allen doesn't have any sacks yet, but he plays 93% of the snaps. Watch the effort. He rushes the passer. He goes to the inside. He sees the screen, and there he goes to show up on the tackle. And Jared Allen... Good kicker, Nick Folk. Tremendous season last year. Three for three this year. Well, officially from 43 yards. And he 
knocks it home. The Jets move the ball down the field. Mistake by Geno Smith in the red zone with that big sack, but they get points. And the deficit now 11. Interesting start to this one with the Jets. A uh, couple of mistakes allow the Bears to capitalize and get on top 14 nothing. The jet drive was the best one by either team in this first quarter. 11 plays, 55 yards. The Bears will get their their hands back on the ball after the kick from Nick Folk. Yards deep and returnable for Rashad Ross. Headed off the practice squad this week. Stopped shy of the 15-yard line by Greg Salas. Backup receiver for the Jets. Jake Cullors had a very good Monday Night Football career as the Bears quarterback. Back on the field this Monday in a moment. Unmistakable big buildings in New York City. Final night of summer. Actually, this game kicks off in summer, John, and will uh, end in fall. Tunnel Equinox comes about 10.30 Eastern time tonight. Bears take over at their own 15-yard line. Third Chicago drive. Let's bring five. Cutler has time and has been at 16 yards of the first down for the tight end. Just good pass protection. The Jets blitz off the right side. Chicago picks it up and... Bennett, number 83, right side of your screen, beats Dewan Landry on a basic cross easily. A little tap of the center lets him know you can snap it. Cutler's got it. And he throws a strike that's knocked away. Marshall was being double covered and blanketed. Antonio Allen was. One of the players there. I mentioned the tap that was from the left guard Ola to the center De La Puente. Those two are replacing Matt Sloss of the X Jet and Roberto Garza, the veteran inside. We've already heard from Marshall, Jeffrey Bennett, Matt Forte, the running back who does so much for this team. And Santonio Holmes, a third or fourth receiver for the Bears here as they've gotten Josh Morgan back healthy and uh, back in practice this last week. The ex-Jet Holmes excited to come back here tonight. Second and ten, Jeffrey. Got a good block from Marshall. Got a good block from Bennett. And gets the first down at the 44-yard line. Well, the Jets get caught in another disguise. They're showing blitz. They bail out late. And they're in no position to defend this quick screen. Nice blocking on a perimeter by Bennett and Marshall. And they love throwing these quick fastball screens to Alshon Jeffrey. He's outstanding after the catch. Cutler again out of his hands. It's Bennett one more time. Made two Jets miss. And he ends up gaining eight yards on the play. Should be a gain of zero. Demario Davis, third-year linebacker, just overran it. And what distinguishes these great receivers of the Bears is their ability to run with the ball after they catch it. Bennett for a tight end. Outstanding. Bennett came in leading this team with 15 receptions. At eight in the loss to Buffalo, seven, and the game-winning touchdown last week in Santa Clara against the 49ers. Second and one, Tony Fiametta, the fullback out of Syracuse, leads the way for Forte. Not going to go anywhere. Muhammad Wilkerson, the best player on this Jets defense comes up with a tackle he was ejected last week in the game against Green Bay along with the second third year man Damon Harrison up front and Sheldon Richardson the defensive rookie of the year from a year ago Harrison Davis in the middle Colt Wilson pace off the edge we've talked a lot about the secondary under pressure tonight 32 It's back into coverage. Cutler throws complete to Jeffrey at the 38-yard line. Gain of 10. Another Bears first down. The Jets are going to have to change this defensive philosophy. They continue to show blitz. Look at all these Jets crowding the line of scrimmage. They drop out of there on the snap. And Cutler has plenty of time to survey the defense and find an open look. 
Final minute of this first quarter. Good one for the Bears. Cutler on the sideline punt by Santonio Holmes. As you can hear the Jets fans respond. Welcome back. Simple outside breaking route. Antonio Allen caught in a runout technique. No problem. Cutler has jumped into no huddle offense. Toss for Chase. Jack of Bushrod out there, but the Jets finally get him and make it a loss of a couple. Wilkerson. All three runs have been negative yardage runs. Take a look at Muhammad Wilkerson, right side of your screen, number 96. Got exceptional lateral ability. Had 10 and a half sacks last week. Batted three balls down in the opening game. He can play any position on the defensive line. This Jet defense needs to generate a turnover. It's what they have not been able to do in the last year or so. Play nine of this drive. They'll have to get the snap off before the quarter ends. Just do get it off in time as Cutler's got a lot of time. Going to take off and run. And he ripped San Francisco with a big 25-yard run last week. He's out of bounds for a first down in the red zone. Gain of 16 as the quarter comes to an end. Bears on the move. Leading the Jets by 11 on Monday Night Football. ESPN celebrating 45 years of Monday Night Football. Bears leading by 11. Chicago had the advantage of a couple of jet mistakes early on. So the stats don't look as lopsided as the score. The key to two turnovers. Won the pick six and won the muffed punt. The Bears have turned into their 14 points. The Jets responded with a good drive to get their field goal. Now Chicago's doing the same. This is play 10 of the drive as we get the second quarter underway. Again, time for Cutler. Sings it in, and Antonio Allen able to break it up. Incomplete. I'm really impressed with this Bear offensive line. They have protected extremely well. They have smelled out a lot of crazy looks from this defense. But watch the center, number 64, De La Puente. He just pins Kendrick Ellis, a backup nose tackle. Neil Puente filling in for Garza had 44 starts for the New Orleans Saints. He knows what he's doing. That was impressive. His offensive line coach there, Aaron Cromer, is the offensive coordinator here with the Bears. Second and ten. Cutler felt the heat, got rid of it right at the feet of Forte. And Jason Babbitt, now in his 11th year in the league at 34 years old, got some pressure. Babbins come full circle, had seven and a half sacks with the Jaguars last year. Broke into the league as a 34 outside backer. Now he's here to rush the passer, and here's Cutler in third and ten. Let's remember on this drive, third and two, he hit Jeffrey for ten yards. Third and six, he scrambled for 16 yards. Once again, they're showing flush pressure. Let's see if they bring it or if they bail. Third and ten, the Jets bring five, pressure's on, Cutler thrown to the end zone, Bennett couldn't pull it in. <laughs> Flag down. He just had Demario Davis, number 56, a linebacker playing free safety. I'm seeing some of the strangest. Holding, defense, number 39, five-yard penalty, first down. Got Antonio Allen. The corner that was thrown a yard away from the line of scrimmage, a couple yards away from the line of scrimmage. Showing Jay Cutler all kind of looks. Watch number 56. He's in the middle of the field. The free safety Cutler looked him off easily and made a great throw to Bennett who couldn't hang on. But Antonio Allen gets called for the penalty. Oh, Bennett should have caught that. Allen was on the left side of your screen. The flag happened only a few yards away from the line of scrimmage, but it gives Chicago. Fresh set of downs. And the 13, Cutler wanted it, wanted to get going. Forte, into the arms of Damon Harrison, but he carries him to the six-yard line. Good strong run by Forte. Good to see Tony Fiametta back. They've missed their fullback. They haven't been able to run the ball in any two-back sets. 
That time an isolation play and Tony Fiametta does a nice job at the point of attack and Forte surges for a nice run. Fiametta was injured week one with a hamstring injury. Then as they made roster moves, had to cut him week two, now back. Marshall again at the top of the screen, one-on-one. -on -one. So Marshall's hand there behind his back as he hand signals with <laughs> Cutler as well. Not just the QB giving hand signals. Here come the other way for Jeffrey, and the pass is incomplete. Jake Cutler is disgusted with himself. It's like Field of Dreams right now for Jake Cutler. He's got the 6'5 Marshall on one side, and he's got Alshon Jeffrey, an emerging superstar on his right side. Cutler just missed the throw. It's a check with me situation. They can hand the ball to Forte, and if they load the box, he can hand signal to either one of these great big receivers. Play 14 of the drive. Look at everybody over to the right side of the quarterback. Just Marshall alone on the left. Good pickup by Forte. Cutler's pass for Jeffrey again incomplete. Calvin Pryor, the rookie safety, able to get in the way. That lucky there. That ball could have been intercepted. Threw that into traffic. And Pryor, number 25, does a nice job breaking on the ball. And I think he got his right hand in there. Nice play by Pryor, who had his struggles last week in Green Bay. Nice work. Secondary comes up big there. And Robbie Gold, one of the top kickers in league history from 24 yards. Knocks it through, and the Bears... Extend the lead again to 14. Jets defense held Cutler 0 for his last four attempts to keep the Bears out of the end zone. ESPN's Monday Night Football brought to you by the all-new 2015 Acura TLX. It's that kind of thrill. LiftMaster, no other garage door opener opens your world like a LiftMaster. And NFLShop.com, find the largest selection of NFL products at the official store of the NFL. Lady Liberty looking fine in the Hudson on this Monday night. And our coverage from Spider Cam is brought to you by DirecTV. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Lisa Salters, glad you're with us. Monday number three of the season. And the Bears on top 17 to 3. Bilal Powell as one of the two men back deep to receive along with Salim Hakeem. It will come to their third down back Powell from two deep. Powell ran right up the back of Hakeem and returned to the 24. Some bizarre defensive looks in that series, John. Very bizarre. Here's a boundary overload blitz. You see three defensive back, back splits on one side. They drop a defensive end and a linebacker on the other side. There's no contain and Jay Cutler slid the line into the blitz and took off running for a gain of 18 yards and these are blitzes and defenses that you see where you try to fool a quarterback and try to help your young secondary and so far it hasn't worked chris johnson in for the jets takes the handoff and gets hit by jared allen and ryan mundy again the three yards john alluded to it before 2009 sixth best season in nfl history when he went for 2000 and six yards. The production fell last year as Johnson had a torn meniscus that he played with the last 13 games with the Titans. At a career low, just under four yards of carry. And we've seen that home run speed. He's uh, hit more 80 plus yard touchdown runs than anyone in league history, six of them. Geo Smith, nobody open. He's flushed. He throws on the run from the middle of the field. His tight end, Amaro, able to hang on at the 30 yard line. The rookie out of Texas Tech with a 44-yard game. Well, it all starts with pass protection. You put a lot of money into this defensive line if you're a Chicago Bear fan. And that time, the Brickishaw Ferguson at left tackle does a great job against Jared Allen. Geno Smith has plenty of time to break contain. Jason Amaro, second-round draft choice, keeps the play alive. But the Brickishaw Ferguson for years has anchored that left tackle position. He's throwing a shutout so far. Goes down Smith, pocket collapses. Ivory out of the backfield. Hit hard as he gains four yards. Third time tonight, Gino has found Ivory on a check down. 
That time good pursuit by the Bear defense. Look at these jet substitutions. Different backs, different receivers. Offensive coordinator Marty Morningwig does an excellent job using his roster. With four receivers, no tight ends. And Ivory is the back here on second and six. And in the quick hands of Curley. First down to the 15-yard line. Jeremy Curley at five foot nine has led this team in receptions the last two seasons. These are nuisance plays. These read options with built-in bubble screens. He can hand it, he can keep it, or he can throw a built-in bubble screen, and Chicago doesn't defend the perimeter, and Curley hurts him on the edge. You know, Smith threw that pick early on, but he's hit his last eight passes. Since that interception, he's 9 of 10. I agree, trying to bounce to the outside, strung out, and brought down Isaiah Fry over there on the edge as the ball was fumbled out of bounds. Fry, John, he's the nickel back now because they had the injury to Charles Tillman, a terrific defensive back. That means Kyle Fuller, the corner, has to become, the nickel has to become a starting corner, and they're without Tillman for the rest of the season. It's going to be awful hard to replace Tillman, but we were up there in training camp. Tillman's like a coach. He has really set a tone for a long time with this Bear defense, and these young corners, they don't want to let him down. I feel like the Jets have to get a touchdown down here in the red zone. I know it's early, but this could go against them quickly. Cumberland at the 10 will make it third and five. Lance Briggs cover. Doing a nice job changing the launching spot. Three-step drop, five-step drop. We've seen some option plays to keep the Bears off balance. Here on third down and five, they stay in the no-huddle offense. Keep an eye on Decker, number 87. He'll be in the slot to your left. And David Nelson, their big wide receiver, they love double moves in the tight red zone. Five for the first down, 10 for the touchdown. Smith. Stops, throws right into Stephen Paya, who was being blocked by Brian Winters, the left guard, and gets in the way of that third down pass. Well, they try to get Chris Johnson on a rail route out of the backfield. Keep an eye on Paya, left side of your screen. Lamar Houston with pressure. Paya gets his hands up. Second time tonight, the Bears have rejected a Geno Smith pass. So it's Folk, good from 43, now trying from 28. Back-to-back -back field goal drives for the Jets. You know, Smith is on a roll, but that one incompletion with Hyam breaking up the pass. Keeps the Jets from the end zone. Where the schedule's set up, you play teams from the other conference once every four years in the regular season. These teams last met day after Christmas in 2010, and the Bears won that one in Chicago, 38-34. The first time the Bears have been here to play the Jets since 2006. That was in the old Giants Stadium. It's now a parking lot. Folk boots it. Rashad Ross. Elevated from the practice squad this week. Will be shy of the 20 on his kickoff return. Well, you've known the Bears for years. Go back to the days when your parents had the black and white TV. The old school Bears, all about defense and the great names. They allowed the fewest points of the season 11 different times. Now it's new school, John. It's all different. It's HD, it's sharp, it's technology, it's modern. The Bears do it through the air. Such a sea change in a very short period of time. All those franchise marks set for the passing game last year. I'd throw it too if I had these receivers. <laughs> Town ending up on this side of the ball. Now Mark Tresman coaching in his second year as the Bears head coach after his successful run twice at champion coach in the Canadian League. The 18 out of the backfield is Matt Forte. Word out of that tackle, gain about four. Demario Davis with a stop. Well, he's emerging as the leader of the Jets. Third rounder out of Arkansas State. Rarely comes off the field. Had two sacks last week against the Packers. 
Very good range. That time a nice open field one-on-one -on -one tackle. And Evan Britton, Mike, is checked back into the game as an eligible tight end, number 62. Try to give him a little bit of extra protection or added blocking at the point of attack with some size. Some time for Cutler and Forte out of the backfield. Back to back, he gets the first down at the 29-yard line. So Saturday, we're sitting with the Jets and we're talking with Rex Ryan. He actually came on the bus and you interviewed him. And he said, oh, I expect to see one more guy in protection than they show. That happens to me all the time because of those exotic blitzes that you talk about. He didn't just blitz Aaron Rodgers last week. He blitzed him with everybody he had. He full blitzed him 12 times. And when you put that on tape, the opposing team that's coming in the next week normally loads up in protection. That's what Mark Tressman said. Number one priority this week, as it is so many weeks, the protection plan. Cutler bumped off the spot, takes off, and turns a would-be sack into a gain of a yard. Sheldon Richardson almost had him in the backfield. That's what these Jets need to do. They need to rely on some of these talented defensive linemen to make a sack. Go in there and wrap tackle Jay Cutler and Cutler continues to escape with his legs and hurt the Jets. Bushrod could have been called for a hold on that play as he was uh, hooking the arm of Richardson, the second year man out of Missouri. After the gain of one, they do this a lot with Alshon Jeffrey. He comes around to get it, and it'll be three yards shy of the first down. It's Davis and Dewan Landry, the safety stop him, and Brandon Marshall's hurt for Chicago. And Marshall came into this game with an ankle injury, and uh, he is in some discomfort down on the field. Well, when you run the ball on the edge, your receivers sometimes have to sustain these blocks for a long time. Let's see if Marshall got rolled up here. A ton of contact, but in some pain as they check his leg. Timeout. Medical staff talking to Brandon Marshall. They have been looking above that right ankle in the calf area, but that right ankle is the one that Marshall injured against Buffalo and limited him. Barely practiced this past week. He's out. Santonio Holmes, the other receiver, in for Chicago on third and three. Just bring pressure, and it's almost intercepted as Richardson went up, deflected it, almost got his hands on it. Sheldon Richardson, last year's Rookie of the Year on defense, an excellent athlete, did a lot of things at Missouri. Number 91, right side of your screen, he sees the ball released. He times his jump perfectly. Lucky that one wasn't intercepted. Good pressure by Demario Davis. So halfway through the quarter, the rookie Patrick O'Donnell will punch it away. Jeremy Curley now goes back after the problems Jalen Saunders had. Punches 42. Curly got hit on the spot and brought down by Ahmad Dixon. Who had a big special team stop last week as well for the Bears. Jets ball down the level. So Brandon Marshall walking back to the locker room. Further examination. He watches a right foot, and that was the ankle we mentioned that had been bothering him. And as the pursuit's coming from David Harris, he gets Marshall in that ankle. Uh, Marshall was in a lot of pain right away. They were looking at him on the Bears bench, and they'll examine him back in the locker room. Marshall has a catch in 117 consecutive games. None so far here tonight. Jets take over. Fifth drive of the night from their own 23. Geno Smith, Jeremy Curley, gain of 16 for New York. That's hard to do, I think. You're in the shotgun. You fake the ball across the formation and have to throw a timing slant. Well done by Geno Smith. And just watch him operate in this no huddle offense, Mike. Down quick toss, David Nelson the grab at the 45. He lost the football back out of bounds. Kyle Fuller. That's going to be a loss of five yards from where the forward progress was because it was a fumble out of bounds. We are both big fans of the rookie corner for the Bears. 
turnover machine. Last week he had two interceptions. That's bad ball security by <laughs> David Delson. It gets the Bears, but don't think for a second that Kyle Fuller hasn't been listening to Charles Tillman exactly. for the exactly. last couple it's months. <laughs> what a future he has. He is a vicious tackling corner for a young man. I like everything about him. In motion, speedster, Salim Hakeem. They fake it to him. Young is chasing Gino. He's just going to bench it. Really young, unblocked on a bootleg. Had two sacks last week. Really ignited this Chicago Bear defense. The ex-Detroit Lion in Gino faces. Gino Smith's face in a hurry. Nice work by... Young. Young had 15 starts in his four years with the Lions. First year here with Chicago. The Jonathan Martin of the 49ers really wrecked the game in the second half as the Bears came back to win. Now on third and nine with a five-man rush. Smith has time and has the first down. And again it is Curley taking it this time into Chicago territory at the 44. Bears come with a blitz, and the New York Jet offensive line rejects it. From left tackle to right tackle, excellent pass protection. And once again, DeBrickashaw Ferguson is putting on a clinic tonight in one-on-one -on -one pass protection. Chris Conti came out the safety for the Bears. Danny McCray, a backup, is now in there at free safety. They give Chris Johnson up inside for about two yards. The zone read is invading the NFL, Mike. I don't know if I like it or not, but it's a big part of pro football these days. It certainly regulates the defense. They have to be assignment oriented, and when you have to defend the dive, the pitch, the perimeter bubble screens, it's tough. All the Jets backs communicate the change of the play. And on second and seven, they switch it to a run for Johnson. And he has nowhere to go. It's the initial penetration by Jonathan Bostic. And now Jets are peeling Bears off the pile. And not a lot of happiness exchanged here. That was a strange audible, Mike. They audible to an isolation right into the blitz. And here's a late flag. Blitz is going to come off your left side. You're going to see the safety rotate. Unblocked at the point of attack is McCray. was over. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number 99. Disrespectfully addressing official. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, so that's Willie, or rather Lamar Houston, I should say. You heard uh, Jerome Boger say disrespectfully addressing official. There was a lot of conversation about would there be a certain list of words that you said that would get you in trouble this year. And they're penalizing the magic words. Abusive, threatening, insulting, player to player or player to official. And that was stated clearly in the video that came out and all the players saw it during the year. And as Houston's addressing the official right there, enough is enough. And the flag is thrown. Let's walk away. The umpire was the one who was uh, getting the verbal abuse from Houston. And the flag was thrown for 15. Nearly intercepted by Fuller as Geno Smith was a little late behind that. And the pushing post play continues at the 25-yard line with the Bears and Jets getting together. Willie Colon, the right guard of the Jets. Very physical blocker but take a look at Nelson wide open down the scene Gino just missed the throw but Willie Cologne number 66 a right guard has a lot to say right now he and Will Sutton have gone at it hard the last two plays there's Johnson he spins it Right around the 20 yard line to the 19. Brandon Marshall already in the Bears locker room, now joined by Tony Fiametta, the Bears fullback who heads off. Right guard Willie Colon on a double team with Breno Giacomini, the ex Seattle Seahawk. That's how you take care of business. You don't need to yell and scream. 
Just come off the ball and get good movement on a double team. Bears making a, a late substitution. Jets at the line here. It's 35. Smith throws middle. Curly. Oh, tough job to hang on for the touchdown. That's big time by Geno Smith. Lamar Houston beaten down on a young quarterback. He stands in the face of pressure and throws a strike to Curley. Well done. Danny McCray comes up and may have used that headgear in leading on the contact to the last 15 Personal in the foul. back end. Unnecessary roughness. Contact on the defensive receiver with a 29. The 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. The result of the play is a touchdown. He did use the shoulder, but they say it was defenseless. In any case, an unbelievable job by the five foot nine Curly to hang on off that hit by McCray. And I told you earlier that Chris, Chris Conti, the safety, was out and McCray was in. You got a new nickel, Isaiah Fry, a new safety, and you go right after him. Good play calling by Marty Morningwig, the offensive coordinator. The Jets, who trails 14 to nothing, are back in this one as it's now a four point game. Jeremy Curley, fifth round pick in 2011. A productive few years here for the Jets. Well, John, the resiliency shown by Geno Smith, the first pass he threw, second play of the game, was an interception for touchdown. He's been very good since then. Well, they're in a no-back set right here. You see Curley, no reroute whatsoever. He's screaming down the middle of the field, and the free safety's late to get there, but Geno Smith has shown a lot of mental toughness. He's taken a couple hits. You throw an early interception. The crowd is booing. You hang in there, and you've got the Jets right back in it. A pop-up kick from the 50, trying to force a return and pin them inside the 10, but no return as it's fair caught by Rashad Ross. Lisa Salters. Yeah, Mike, a couple of Bears injuries to update you on. First, fullback Tony Fiametta. He is out of the game with a hamstring injury. And also an update on Brandon Marshall. When he first came over to the sideline, we were told that his return to the game was probable. As you know, he is now back in the locker room, still there, and he's been downgraded there, now telling us that his return to this game is questionable. Mike? Okay, Lisa, so we'll uh, keep watching for that. And, John, when you lose your fullback, it's a position where you don't have a, a number two, so that removes some of the plays you have in there. Certainly does. They're going to use Dante Rosario as the H-back in that role. You see him back there in front of Forte now. From the 20, Cutler hit as he throws, almost intercepted by Demario Davis of the Jets. Muhammad Wilkerson bringing the heat for New York. Well, it's a good thing that blitz got home because Bennett is running free down the middle of the field. Once again, it's Muhammad Wilkerson on the center, number 96. You see him on your left side beating Bushrod on an inside move. Good work by Wilkerson, and that ball was slightly underthrown, and Demario Davis was able to deflect it. Jets continue to mix it up. Some of these looks I have not seen before. On second and ten, Cutler's pass complete to the 32-yard line to Alshon Jeffrey. John on the defensive side. Now Marshall's not out there. Can the Jets change their coverages a little bit because there's no Brandon Marshall for the moment? Well, they certainly can. I think a lot of it depends on how healthy Santonio Holmes is. Holmes has had a history of doing some damage in this league as well. Forte to the left. They'll gain about a yard. It's five carries for only about a yard total for Matt Forte here so far. Not a ton of a, a, a big surprise, I should say, to you in this game, John, because that's what the Jets do so well. That defensive front, Forte, has uh, not had it going in terms of the rushing thus far this year. 34 carries for 104 yards, including the five here tonight. Jets loading up to their left, Cutler's right. And man comes free, but Cutler gets it to Rosario. And a good job by the veteran who's played with multiple teams. Overload blitzes. They come from the field. They come from the boundary. But this time it comes from the right side of the screen. It's coming from the wide side of the field. And Jake Cutler's lucky he got rid of that ball. 
in time. Short yardage. The Jets love the old-fashioned bear defense. We'll pull back in there, Forte stretched him. Oh man, did he keep those legs moving to get a first down? Well, you can take Dewan Landry a few yards. That tells you how strong you are, because Landry is cut. You aren't kidding, Mike. The old-fashioned 46 bear defense. They covered the center, both guards. I think they went on a quick count before the Jets could get into their stance, and the veteran Forte takes us to the two-minute drill with great effort. Two minutes, first half, Bears 17, Jets 13. Similar number of plays, the Jets have 100 more yards of offense than the Bears. One of the big differences in the game, the second play of the game, Ryan Mundy intercepting Geno Smith in a 45-yard touchdown. Chicago leads 17-13. Cutler eludes oh. Kopels and completes it to Jeffrey down at the 45 of New York first down. What a play by Cutler. No one touched Kopels. Not only did Cutler elude it, threw a fastball strike for the first down. After the gain of 12, Jeffrey could not hang on as he was settling in the zone played by the Jets. Jeffrey didn't have a full practice week either. He has a hamstring problem. Got a couple of good days of work. Mark Tressman, the head coach, told us last night. Timing is always an issue when you miss practice. Doesn't matter who you are. It affects timing in a passing game, and it's been a case twice tonight now. Second and ten, here comes the pressure up the middle. Cutler cannot get away from David Harris. The ball comes out, but he's ruled down. Cutler was ruled down as the ball spit out. And Demario <laughs> Davis returned it for the touchdown. This Rex Ryan is unbelievable. He's bluffing the blitz all night, and he'll tell you before the game, we will not disappoint you. We will bring everything we have. That's an old-fashioned jailbreak blitz. The Bears are short in pass protection, and... That ball's out, Mike. Ooh, that ball is uh, coming out there now. We're inside the last two minutes. Jets cannot challenge, and now the clock was running. Jerome Bulger stops it. The previous play is under review. So it will be looked at upstairs with that ball coming out. As Cutler lost a bit of control of it coming out, it was recovered by the Jets. In a clear recovery there. You see, it is coming out before... Uh, we'll watch for that left elbow coming down to the ground in the contact. Looks to be out. We think this is going to be Jets ball at the Bears 46 with a minute 30 left. You can't give him the touchdown here. Jerry Austin twice the Super Bowl referee watching this replay with us in the booth. The ball is out now. All he has is one foot on the ground and he never regains control. The ball is blown dead as being down. Therefore, the ball is going to belong to the Jets at the spot of recovery. In replay, they also have to see a clear recovery by the Jets, and as you saw, it was run down the field by Davis. Here's Jerome Bogert with the ruling. After reviewing the play, it is a fumble recovered by the, uh, the Jets. It will be New York ball, first and 10 on the 46-yard line. Please reset the game clock to 1 minute 30 seconds. That's a big play in John. It was the pressure as David Harris came through to start that. And even though the whistle was blown, Davis kept playing and made sure he had the clear recovery to give New York the ball. That's what the Jets need. They were last in the NFL and generating turnovers last year. That's huge. It sets up Geno Smith. Great field position. Three timeouts left. But when you come with an all-out blitz, the offense is going to be a protector short. That time, it got home. Never mention their names. Credit to Carl Madsen and Gene Cunningham. They're the replay official, the replay assistant upstairs. They stopped that play to make sure that it got looked at. 
And they did the right thing there. Maybe the Bears didn't do the right thing by not running a play right away. First and 10, New York at the Chicago 46. Smith is rolling. Looking to run here to slide down with no game. Jets have the full complement of timeouts remaining. And they choose to let a lot of time leak down here. Gino in complete control. Looks like he's on his own here. Trips to the field. They isolate Nelson into the boundary up top. 31 seconds, second play of the drive. Smith about to get hit, fires too tall for Curley. And incomplete, it was Lamar Houston who was about ready to bring Smith down before he threw it. Second time the ex-Oakland Raider has applied pressure. And on that rollover on the back end there, Smith, when he came out of the pile, as he's getting his Jets lined up here, was limping. Let's just watch him here on third and 11. Smith in all kinds of trouble, just gets rid of it towards Powell. It's incomplete, he's got an eligible receiver there, so no grounding, but the Bears defense comes up big in that sudden change situation. Left guard Brian Winters beaten badly by Stephen Paya. Take a look at number 67, left side of your screen. Paya with an inside move, beats Winters badly, and there's nothing Geno can do. Very good sudden change defense by the Chicago Bears. Credit to Mel Tucker, their defensive coordinator. And Chicago comes up with a big stop, and Ryan Quigley will try to pin the Bears back. Their catch signaled by Santonio Holmes. He'll let it bounce, and it's a touchback. Bears get it at the 20, then we get you to the Toyota halftime with Chris Berman. Of course, the big uh, news of the day, the continuing off-the-field story with Steve Bashotti, the owner of the Ravens, holding a press conference responding to that ESPN.com Outside the Lines article. So you'll hear that, plus Chris Mortensen and Adam Schefter, all the news around the league and everything that happened today in sports and today on Sports Center. All coming up on the Toyota Halftime. Interesting to see what Mark Tressman does here. No Brandon Marshall. Your fullback's out. You're missing two starting linemen, and the Jets have returned to their blitzing ways. Under, under, March two, ace. two timeouts remaining for the Bears with 40 seconds. Give you a screen to see what can get you going. Or a draw, Forte. If not much, just a gain of three. Neither side looking like we take a timeout. Looks like we we'll take it to the locker room here. Boy, it's a, a shame for the Jets. If that play was called correctly on the field, that's a touchdown for the Jets, and they are on top. They did have the opportunity when they got the ball back via replay, but couldn't convert. Well, officiating's played a big part in this score. Remember, Walls, the corner, victimized on a big pass interference penalty, and that play you just spoke of has a lot to do with where we are. So the Bears will try to continue the streak that they've done better than anybody in the league at the moment. Take a halftime lead and close it out with the win. They'll get the ball to start the second half. Here's Chris Berman with the Toyota halftime. Chris, and set for the second half here at MetLife Stadium in Chicago, leading 17-13. Jay Cutler only 107 yards. Jets got to him once, and that helped force a turnover, but the Jets couldn't capitalize. Geno Smith's one interception taken back for a touchdown. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Lisa Salter. So offensively, Smith and the Jets are moving the ball pretty well. Yes, they are. They just have to stay away from turnovers. Geno had the bad interception. They had one in special teams. That's been the Achilles heel of the Jets. Bears are going to get the ball back. How important, if they have Brandon Marshall in this second half, will that be for both sides as they come up with their strategy? I think it's big, Mike. I don't think the Bears can run the football against this Jet defense. They haven't done it. Only seven carries for seven yards. They need Marshall to offset Jeffrey. So they can throw the football with some success. If he's not available, I expect the Jets to gang up on Jeffrey. And the Jets' pressure package may increase, and certainly they'll be keeping an eye on that. We'll go to Lisa Salters for the injury update on Marshall as this third quarter gets underway. 
Yeah, Mike, Mark Tressman just told me that he doesn't know much about Brandon Marshall's injury, but coach has been told that Marshall is going to try to give it a go. He is going to go back into the ball game. Tressman said that he doesn't know how limited Marshall is or isn't. He said we're just going to throw the ball around and see what happens. Mike? And here he marches on the field as there is no return by the Bears and they kick off. Here's what they did in the first half. Did a nice job mixing it up. They went to him a couple times in the red zone. They doubled him in and out. Pryor made a nice break on the ball. He even had Quentin Copels, an outside linebacker, go out there to reroute him and disrupt the timing with help over the top. Then they doubled him again. Safety in a corner. In and out. No catches. And then he re-aggravated an injury. And this Jet defense is back in the game. And the Jets are playing without their corner, their first round pick from last year, Dean Milliner, who's injured here tonight. They get it to Jeffrey, coming around from his receiver's spot. To get to the 27 at seven first down yards. And don't tell me Rex Ryan doesn't have a plan for Marshall. That time, they lined up Calvin Pace, an outside linebacker out there on Brandon Marshall. They do not want Marshall to impact this game as he did last Sunday in San Francisco. That message is loud and clear. If you're going to beat us, somebody else is going to have to do it. Rare to see Kadeem Carey in the game. Just the fifth snap of the year for Matt Forte's backup. Next to Cutler. And Cutler taking a shot for Jeffrey. Jeffrey brings it in. Out of bounds at the 29 in front of Antonio Allen. 44 on the catch. And when you have two bad ball receivers, you are miserable to defend. Jets doing a nice job taking Marshall away that time. It's Jeffrey running right by Antonio Allen and Jay Cutler. Does what he did last week against the 49ers. He comes out of the locker room to start the third quarter, and he shreds them. Mark him at the 31 instead of the 29, so it's officially 42 for Alshon Jeffrey. Third year out of South Carolina. What a talent. Cutler just letting rip here. It is Forte with a lot of space to the 12 yard line. Just like that, Bears are in the red zone. That's complete control of this offense. Cutler comes out of the fake. He's going to look left and look off these, Chicago, these uh, New York Jet defenders. Watch him look left and then just kick the ball to Forte. Great understanding of this passing game. He knows where the primaries are. He knows where the check downs are. And he has a clock in his head. He knows when to get rid of it. Well done. Josh Morgan is the receiver in the slot near side with Marshall at the bottom of the screen. Get show and bring heat as Cutler goes to Marshall. <laughs> Got the feet down. Held on. Touchdown, Chicago. You're playing with fire when you play man-to-man -man coverage. A flag down back by Cutler. Especially when it's against these two receivers. Illegal hands to the face. Offense, Ooh. number seven. Ten-yard penalty. Replay, first down. Michael Ola, who's filling in at left guard for Matt Sloss at number 70. Take a look at him. Hands to the face. Good call. That's Sheldon Richardson as he was coming in, trying to pick him up a bit late. So you got to be real careful. Antonio Allen has been beaten badly twice. One by Jeffrey and one by Marshall. There's the two linemen there. Matt Slauson in the beard, Roberto Garza in front. The two starting linemen who are out by Michael Ola and Brian De La Puente on the left guard and center, respectively. But a big flag. On the rookie out of Hampton there. Push the Bears back to the 22. Jeffrey. Good job to hang on for dear life by Allen before the hustling defensive lineman Sheldon Richardson made the stop. This Jet team has a lot of courage. They continue to blitz. That time, watch these three receivers come out of the bunch. They all go in different directions, and these Jet defensive backs match it perfectly. Man-to-man -man coverage with pressure to start the third quarter. Let's see if Rex backs down or continues to bring it.
Three receivers to the top. The tight end Bennett to the bottom. There are five in the pattern. Forte. Oh, that's a saber. Antonio Allen. Otherwise, Forte at least had a first down and maybe would have scored. Just a great play by Antonio Allen. It's another jailbreak all-out blitz. Somebody has to go get that screening back, and if Antonio Allen doesn't fight through traffic to make that one-on-one -on -one tackle, it walks. They can get a first down of two. Be shocked if he brings another blitz in this down and distance. In five, end zone touchdown, Bennett. Martellus for the second time tonight. Lone coverage. 24, Phillip Adams. Receivers. Wow. Intersect, stack release. They blow the coverage, and Phillip Adams. Beaten badly, that was easy. Second game of Bennett's career that he has scored multiple touchdowns. Robbie Gold adds the extra point. The Bears get five for five on the drive from Cutler. Take the second half kickoff 80 yards. Take an 11 point lead. ESPN's Monday Night Football brought to you by Autotrader.com. Land a great deal on your perfect car at Autotrader.com. ESPNFanshop.com, powered by Dick's Sporting Goods. And AT&T, mobilizing your world. We're behind the scenes here in MetLife Stadium. And the Jets trying to figure out what was going on. And, John, I did a double take when I saw Phillip Adams in coverage. We mentioned the Jets' injuries in the secondary. Uh, according to my numbers, Allen had not played a snap of defense at all this season, those first two games or in the first half there, out there in that key moment. And the communication breakdown leads to a Bears touchdown. A lot of hang time, but it will be returned by Salim Akeem. And a good hang time and placement will keep the Jets shy of the 20 yard line. Jake Cutler, give me pressure. Give me my big receivers. Give me an 11 point lead. Bears starting safety, Ryan Mundy, who has an interception return for a touchdown here tonight. Shaken up on that play. Bears medical staff out looking at him, and now we see him being helped up and helped off as he was in there tackling Salim Akeem. One of his own players ends up getting him. It's Kasim, Kasim Green. And Mundy able to walk off under his own power. That interception in the first minute it's the first time there's been a pick six in the first minute of a monday night football game 697th monday night game it's the first time somebody's taken the interception back for a touchdown inside that opening minute of the game see danny mccray he had a play at the end of the first half because of the injury to chris conti conti is back for the bears now mccray has to play the other safety as monday's out momentarily See, Geno Smith had a good first half. His Jets down 11. It passes inbounds. It's a fumble. And did the Bear player reestablish inbounds? I don't think he came back inbounds. It should stay with the Jets. Yes. The Bears do recover, but he's got to come back inbounds. He's on the white when he recovered, so it's still Jets ball. Somebody's got to tell David Nelson to hang on to the ball. That's the second time he's carried the ball loosely away from his body. And guess who punched it out again? Fuller is that the football was recovered by a player with his foot out of bounds. Second down. And it was Williams sliding in, about to get it as well. And Fuller with his foot out of bounds. But as you said, John, it is <laughs> exceptional play there. Big hit that time by Williams. The Bears bringing some heat here as they've limited the Jets' rushing attack with Chris Johnson. What was uh, Mundy telling us? Yes, or it was, I'm sorry, it was Lance Briggs who told us that with all these young corners, sometimes you have to find a tape of a guy from five or eight years ago and show the way to play cornerback. Mm -mm. 
You just watch week one and two of Charles Tillman playing, and Fuller has been in uh, Tillman's hip pocket right from when he got to the Bears camp. And uh, Tillman now can only watch and support. But you got to be proud of what he's seen from Kyle Fuller. Jim Jennings, the other corner for the Bears, veteran. Third and two for Geno Smith, who throws, and it's behind the tight end of Morrow. Couldn't stop and catch it. That's a three and out for the Jets. We didn't have Eric Decker on that drive, and he re-aggravated his hamstring injury late oh, first half. Coming left to right. Open receiver. I don't think Lance Briggs got his hand on it. That ball should be caught. Here's Holmes. Ex-Jet would love to take one back here. Looking over to the sideline to get some guidance. As Brett Quig Ryan Quigley gets set to kick it away. Deep kick. Room for Holmes. 55 yards on the kick. San Antonio Holmes cuts back inside. Flags come down as Holmes is pushed out of bounds at the 45. Former Super Bowl MVP. Success with Pittsburgh for tumultuous years with the Jets. Some success, but did not end well last year. Let go, and the Bears pick him up in August this year. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number 59. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Chicago keeps the ball. First down, timeout. 28 yard punt return by Holmes erased on the flag right there. Get a look at the Freedom Tower in Lower Manhattan on this Monday night. 9 11 Memorial over there as well. You see the footprint of those two World Trade Center towers. Bears take over from the 20. And the sack, the combination of Wilkerson and Demario Davis getting Cutler for the big loss of 10. Jet defense continues to blitz. And when you blitz, sometimes you create a one-on-one -on -one for an excellent pass rusher left side of your screen. I think the Bears made a mistake in pass protection. Wilkerson unblocked. Gets to Jake Cutler. Got to be real careful. When you're way behind in the chains against this Jet defense, you have no idea what the alignment is going to be. Cutler's got to use his snap count and try to decipher the protection to use. Swinging it out to Forte. Big first hit by Davis limits the game to a couple. And we'll have third and long coming up in the Jets. Their offense has gone three and out the last two trips. They could really use one on the defensive side. That was almost a lateral there. Jake Cutler's got to get up to the line of scrimmage quickly and use his snap count to read the deployment of the Jets and make sure that he's aware of any overloads and blitzes. And it looks like there's pressure coming again. But snap to Cutler, swinging it out, caught by Holmes, and not going to go very far. So the Jets' defense gets the job done, and Chicago will punch it away. Credit Antonio Allen, he's made a couple impact tackles. Got beaten coverage in that last series that time. He makes a nice open field on San Antonio Holmes, and let's we'll see if Jeremy Curley can set the Jets up. Curley, who's had as many fair catches as punt returns during his career, sure-handed. Jets bring pressure up the middle and almost got to Patrick O'Donnell. And Curley with another fair catch. This one coming at the 37-yard line. Former Jet Santonio Holmes trying to make a third down play. Antonio Allen comes up with a stop for New York. Well, John Geno Smith in his second year, starter since his first game, comes from West Virginia where he played in Dana Holgerson's offense. This is a very different offense. Yes, it is. Very good offense, don't get me wrong, but in Dana Holgerson's spread system, there aren't many plays. You saw that sideline sheet? Compare that to this sideline sheet. I mean, this West Coast offense that Marty Morningwing runs has hundreds of plays. 
protections and audibles. Smith buying time, looking for Cumberland, his tight end. That pass a bit too long and too high and incomplete. But all these plays require reps. And Geno Smith finally got a full offseason. He got a full training camp. And all these reps have added up. And you see progress. You still see some areas that are rough around the edges that he needs to improve. But he's an athletic quarterback. He's got mental toughness. They have improved the supporting cast. But I think they can continue to do that as well. Look at the talent around Smith on the offensive side, adding Chris Johnson this year in the backfield to go with Chris Ivory. And this is Ivory with a run up the middle. He gets knocked down by Danny McRae. But he's got a first down in Bears territory at the 45. And a Bear is injured back there behind the play. It's Conti, the safety again. So both Bears starting safeties, Mundy and now Conti shaking up. This is a rolling ball of butcher knives. It's all knees and elbows. He runs right over safeties, linebackers, and he moves the piles repeatedly. And Chris Ivory can wear you out physically. Let's hope Conti is all right. Remember, Conti was coming in the game with a left shoulder problem. He had to come out of the San Francisco game after a great interception, too, with a shoulder injury. Had to come out earlier in the game because of the shoulder. And Vereen, the rookie, has just checked in. The the Chicago Bears are decimated with injuries at the safety position. There's Vereen. He played corner and safety at Minnesota. Last week, I saw him play in the nickel corner. This young man's played more positions in three weeks than most guys play in a lifetime. Rookie out of Minnesota, fourth-round pick. He's in the game. Smith gives to Ivory, spinning and turning inside the 40. And down to the 39, a first-down gain of a half dozen. This kid runs the rock. And they have a lot of good backs here. Chris Johnson, you've talked about. I think Bilal Powell's an outstanding back, but a lot of the yardage he accumulates is after that first contact. After contact, he was fifth last year in the NFL. John Yards after contact. Top of that list early this year. Curly with the catch inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. First down for the Jets. Down 11 with six and a half in the third. And when you can run the ball like they've run it with Chris Ivory, the play action pass has a lot of sting. That time Gino fakes it to Ivory. He pops it to Curley, who's open over the ball, and Curley does a nice job after the catch. Bears have five DBs. Four of them are not week one starters. We're only in week three. Two new safeties. The nickelback is moved to corner, and there's a different nickelback in there. First and ten. They'll run it inside with Ivory for a gain of two yards. Take me to the sidelines here in the coach's box upstairs. When you see there are two new safeties in the game, what's the communication on the coach's headsets? Well, if I'm the Jets, I'm going to speed up the tempo and try to limit the communication and see what these guys know about their defense. See if they can play without any assistance from the sideline, and that's just what Marty Morningwig is doing for this Jet offense. Second and eight for Smith. Got time. Throws it. Complete to David Nelson in front of Kyle Fuller. That's a first down for the Jets in the red zone. And I look out in that bare huddle, Mike, to your point. Lance Briggs, the veteran linebacker who's played forever, has got to try to organize these troops. Nice timing pattern to the outside by Nelson. But I guarantee if Briggs doesn't even know half of these Bears' names, I tell you. These are all players that he has no playing history with, hardly at all. He said that to us last night. I, said, I introduced myself to Ego Ferguson three times. Hey, you're, you're Ego again, right? Will Sutton. Down 11. Smith looking deep. Good job back there. Now he moves and he throws. Oh, good. And it's intercepted by Fuller. His third in two weeks. Perhaps he'll advise to bring it out. But still, it takes a scoring opportunity away from the Jets. There is a flag down at the end of the play. It's the inconsistencies of Geno Smith that create doubt in this franchise. It's an awful decision, but he jumped when he threw it. He had nothing on it. And you have to know where you're throwing the football. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, Passing team, number 74. 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot. Chicago keeps the ball. 
first down. And Fuller's decision to come out is helped out because it brings the ball to the 20-yard line. Kyle Fuller in prime time two weeks in a row has shown up big. But this ball is a terrible decision late down the middle. And Gino didn't even have two feet on the ground when he threw it. But you're right, Fuller should have stayed in bounds. Poor mechanics, poor decision, and poor results. And the third turnover of the night. And the Jets turned the ball over as much as any franchise in football over the last three years. Cutler and the Bears get the ball back. And they'll move it back five. Jermon Bushrod, false start. False start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. What they say uh, it was Mel Tucker, the defensive coordinator last night, who told us about Fuller. He could have played in the 60s, yeah. the 70s, the 80s. Old school from a great football family. All the brothers, one who's retired from the NFL, one currently playing along with Kyle, and then a younger brother at Virginia Tech. All played for Frank Beamer, all well coached. Bud Foster, the tremendous defensive coordinator for Virginia Tech. Turning a great pro. Jeffrey went up, couldn't get the second foot down. Out of bounds and incomplete. You see what Jay Cutler's doing. He sees the late rotation in the secondary. He knows Antonio Allen has no help over the top. And Allen's running out of there. He's trying to play conservative, but Cutler couldn't care less. He knows he has he knows he has an acrobat that's six foot four with a wingspan that can pull it down. And good call by the official. But I'd be real careful if I was Antonio Allen. That's the third time in the third quarter they've targeted him deep. What we're saying, guys, and even now he's got it, and he's going to go down. Sheldon Richardson and Demario Davis, sons of anarchy. Wilkerson, Richardson, Harrison. That time it's Sheldon Richardson. Coming off your left side, watch Bushrod number 74 gets beat on a power rush, and there's help from Jason Babin as well. Third down in a long way to go. Have to get to the 30. This will bring four. Cutler. Got the back of the ball hit as he threw, and Allen oh. couldn't pick it off. Wow, that's a killer there for the Jets. Quinton Copels, I'm pretty sure, got the back end of the ball as Cutler was just about to release, and that knuckleball could not be pulled down by Allen. Defensive backfield coach Tim McDonald says Allen has outstanding ball skills. Sometimes you start running. Before you secure the catch, you take your eyes off the ball. That was as easy as it will ever be for Antonio Allen. Patrick O'Donnell with the punt. Not good. Curly saying, I got it. Fair catch. He's bumped. That's a flat. They go from the 44 to the 29-yard line. Well, McLean, that is not smart football. Clearly a fair catch by Curley, and that'll be a big penalty. Manning, that is. Manning was just activated for this game. and After the catch, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, kicking team, number 53. 15-yard penalty. New York keeps the ball. First down. Timeout. The Jets will get the ball in great field position. They almost had the ball without the punt. As Antonio Allen said, I had my hands on an INT. Couldn't reel it in. Bears without Chris Conti the rest of the game. Starting safety with a shoulder injury. He's done for the evening. Up the middle of the run for Chris Ivory. And the Jets will take advantage of the good field position here at the back end of the third to try to cut into this 11-point lead. Look, I like what I see from Ivory. I mean, the Bears broke a franchise record for futility defending the run. Chris Ivory is running the ball effectively. I'd continue to feature the big back. Jets have 18 runs tonight, John, for 81 yards. I'm 
Chase Amaro, the rookie tight end, is the motion man. Design run for the quarterback. Ivory with a great block. Spring Smith to the 12 yard line. That's a direct run. And guess who the lead blocker is? Chris Ivory, and he lays some lumber. Watch this lead block on this direct run by Geno Smith. Pow! How about that elusiveness? Gets Lance Briggs on the block. Well, mark it officially at the 10. Since he didn't slide, he got the complete yardage from where he went down and was touched. First and goal, Jets. Time in the middle of the line wouldn't let anything happen there. Led by Will Sutton, the rookie. And the Bears try to remake this line because John told you how bad they were running the ball last year. They brought in free agents like Lamar Houston and Willie Young and Jared Allen to help pass rush. And inside, they brought in two rookies. Ego Ferguson and the man you just saw, Sutton. Try to help Briggs and the rest of the defense shore up against the run. Quick count. Smith. Ivory with blockers. Ten. Five. To the three-yard line. That's a screen pass with lead blockers. Well-designed play. Watch Bohannon, 40. Watch 85. Cumberland, they'll be the lead blockers. They're going to reverse pivot. Just drop the little bluff screen to the halfback. And Chris Ivory is running hard. Let's see if the Jets have a receiver that can mismatch one of the bare corners down in the tight red zone. They're limited with Greg Salas and Jeremy Curley, two smaller size wideouts on the edge. How about they just run it? Smith design run. Oh. Ball comes out late. Whistle blows it, ruling him down by contact. The Jets should go for a field goal here to make it a one possession game, and they will. For the life of me, I don't understand that call. You have Chris Ivory, who's running extremely hard, and you go with a direct shotgun run with a quarterback. Geno Smith with Brian Winters pulling. This is a power play against an all-out blitz, and your quarterback is the ball carrier. It fooled nobody. Nick Folk has made 43 and 28-yard field goals here tonight. And a challenge flag thrown by Mark Tressman as the Bears got a look at that, and they want to see if that ball came out. Ripping at the ball, ripping at the ball. Smith, his knee comes down. It looks like the ball came down. It came out after the knee came down. You also have the forward progress issue. So maybe he won't even be able to challenge. That's why four officials are conferring with Tressman now. The forward progress or not, I think that knee is down there before the ball comes free. There is no challenge. The rule on the field was that the runner's forward progress was stopped and was being driven back prior to the ball coming loose. This aspect cannot be challenged. Fourth down. So Tressman retains his challenges. Nick Folk is asking Jerome Boger to reset the play clock, pump it back up to 25. He was down at five. And the game clock restarts. And Folk for his third field goal of the night. Three for three on the evening for Folk. Six for six on the year. It's a one-score game. From New York City, we'll go to Kansas City next Monday night. Countdown gets you going at 6 Eastern. Then we'll have the Patriots and the Chiefs. Tom Brady... And the Patriots survived that game against Oakland last week. A quality last three quarters by Kansas City in Miami. A little smell of the barbecue in the parking lot at Arrowhead. Great tailgate spots and great scenes in the league. We haven't been there on a Monday night the last couple of years. So looking forward to KC this time next week. Eight-point game, Nick Folk kicks to Rashad Ross. It's a short kick, and it has to be fielded by Dante Rosario. 
Back up tight end to the 25 yard line. Hit miss hit there. Well, the Jets have wanted to play some blitz coverage, some one on one at times with Antonio Allen, and Cutler is looking for it. Threw a perfect deep strike to Alshon Jeffrey. Then he threw a touchdown pass against Antonio Allen to Brandon Marshall. Was called back, hands to the face on their left guard. And then Phillip Adams comes into the game, doesn't execute a switch. Lack of secondary people has hurt the Jets this season. Antonio Allen dropped an interception on the last possession. And Quentin Copels lines up in Brandon Marshall's face again at the bottom of the screen. Drive start for the 25. It's been a quiet night on the ground for Forte. He'll gain three. Matt Forte will be eight carries for 10 yards as we've come through three quarters. After three here at MetLife Stadium, pair of one and one teams. The Bears 24, Jets 16 on Monday Night Football. ESPN celebrating 45 years of Monday Night Football. ABC's Monday Night Primetime National Football League Television Series. 44 years and a day ago, the reigning Super Bowl champion Jets went to Cleveland by the lake there and lost 31-21. That was the first Monday Night Football game. It was the 45th season of Monday Night Football, but the Jets were a part of that very first game. And in the booth that night, Keith Jackson, Howard Cosell, and Don Meredith. Of course, Keith, Keith did the first year of Monday Night Football, then Frank Gifford, Al Michaels after that. And uh, Hello to Keith. I got a chance to talk to Keith uh, earlier today by phone. He's out in California. He and his wife, Terri Ann, doing great as, uh, as ever. It's so good to hear Keith's voice. His forte carries for a yard or two as we begin this fourth quarter. I know both of us just honored to be a part of the legacy of Monday Night Football and all the great people who have been a part of covering the NFL here on Monday nights over these 45 seasons. Really am, Mike. It's an honor, and those are big shoes to fill. Those are three legends right there. They named the broadcast school at Washington State. It's the Edward R. Murrow School. But the broadcast building's named Keith Jackson Hall. Deserved honor there. Third and five for Jay Cutler and the Bears. Hanging on to this eight-point lead, and the pressure comes again as Cutler throws for Holmes, who's covered by Darren Walls and this Jets defense stabilizing here John in this second half no idea what the coverage is I mean Rex Ryan this defensive staff look at these three defenders on the back end you don't know what the coverage is like Mark Tressman told us you see overload blitzes bail blitzes boundary blitzes and they have no tendencies none and the Jets have crept back into this game Patrick O'Donnell to kick it away. 46 on the kick from the 25 turn. Turns it upfield. Climb through for 10 yards. So the Bears have gone three and out three straight times. And Geno Smith and the Jets will try to come out and tie the game. Geno's been up and down. It started on a dark note. He picked it up, and then he threw another interception in the red zone. But First play of the game, fakes a screen to his left, throws an interception to his right, and it was run back for a touchdown. And then you see him escape to his left. He's off balance. He's late. Another interception. That's taking points off the board. And let's see if he can put something together. Chris Johnson uh -oh. couldn't hang on. Man, did he have a lot of room. That throw. Chris should handle that throw, but Gino. Jab that one low. Bad trajectory, and clearly the young quarterback is frustrated. He's got a good pocket to throw from. Chris should catch that ball, but I thought it was a brick. Remember Smith, uh, John, working in the second half without Eric Decker. That hamstring that has bothered him since training camp, re-aggravated in Green Bay last week. Aggravated again this week. It's a direct snap this time. To Johnson, he takes it to the 41-yard line. And the Jets do a lot on offense, so much so that you wonder 
Where do they hang their hat? What, what is the base of what they do? I don't know. I've seen Michael Vick play tonight on a direct run. I've seen a Wildcat run now. Direct snap runs to Geno Smith. We've seen read option, pitch plays. And on third down and three, they need to find a way to get a first down, and they're limited at the receiver position with Decker out. Zach Sudfeld, their third tight end, is up in the bunch at the top of the screen. Chris Johnson joins them out there. Underneath, Sudfeld. First down at the 44 for number 44. Sixth catch of his NFL career. They motion to an empty backfield set. Four receivers to the right, one to the left. And Chicago didn't pick up Sudfell on this little under route. Cumberland might have got away with a pick there on Lance Briggs, but that was a confusing formation again. Zach's brother Nate led Indiana's big win this past week. Good football family there. Johnson hit hard as he gets four yards. John, we see a guy like Sudfeld, the third tight end, come in and make that play there. Sometimes that deception is frustrating with this Jets offense, but they maximize players. If they have a small role, they find something for you to do if you're dressed to the game. And it's refreshing to me. I see so many of these no-huddle offenses playing the same personnel every play. Marty Morningwig, he's got ships coming throughout the night, all night. <laughs> Jets at the Chicago 40, down eight. Sideline toss, Salas with the catch. There's another one of those. What'd you call those guys back in the day? LRPs? Limited role players. Right. You know, if you got a guy that can block a defensive end, put him in the game. If you got a guy that can run a double move, put him in. But Salas is playing one position. Nelson is playing the other. Decker is out. This Jet receiving core has been depleted for the last few years, and that continues. Third and very short. Keeper Smith flag down first down. the Jets formation set With enough guys in the right spots on the line let's see they went quick I took a quick peek up there I was starting to count the players on the line illegal formation offense there were only six men on the line of scrimmage number 86 was lined up in the backfield five-yard penalty replay third down and that's where sometimes all the smoke and mirrors can break on you. it's a terrible penalty you, you go on a quick count you have to be organized you have to have seven men on the line of scrimmage he's got to get up on the line of scrimmage Funny, you look at that one, John. They might have been okay. They might have had enough on the line of scrimmage. Now we look at that. It's third down anyway. Smith throws Amaro, the rookie, got there. First down, Jason Amaro, the second-round pick out of Texas Tech. And the Jets keep the drive alive. Geno Smith gets hit by Jared Allen late. Just a tight end delay, shallow cross, and Smith had enough time to unload it with Jared Allen beating down on him. Nice job getting the first down by the young tight end. Take a look at Jared Allen working against the Brickishaw Ferguson. That almost looked a little late. What's up? The 32. Smith with time. Throws. A good catch by Curley. He's had a nice night here for the Jets. A gain of about seven on first down. And Chicago continues to play zone coverage. Three deep, four underneath. Not a lot of mystery blitzes from these Bears. And the up-tempo from the Jets continue. Let's see if the Bears heat them up. 25, Bohannon leading the way to the fullback. Chris Johnson trying to spin away from one tackle. Look at the Bears pursue to the ball. It looks like the way the Bears captain finished plays off a couple of years ago. Nice job by Lance Briggs. Shooting a gap. They blitz him. Actually, that's Bostic. It's a good run fit by these Bears. Once again, Fuller, 23. <laughs> he shows up. Whoever has the ball, expect 23 Fuller to show up around it. Hey, 
Third and short. Bilal Powell now in there for the Jets. Smith firing middle deflected for Cumberland, who had three Jets with him, Jonathan, or three Bears with him. Jonathan Bostic deflected it as Jared Allen put on the pressure. Here comes another folk field goal attempt. They're asking a lot of Geno Smith on that play. It's a bootleg to his left. They do not block Jared Allen. And Allen plays it perfectly. He's in Geno's face in a hurry. He's got to stop, pop, and make a quick delivery. And he's lucky that one wasn't intercepted. Nice play by the veteran Jared Allen. This one's 42 yards. And he hooks it in. This clean operation starts outside the pipes, but turns in. Five-point game. ESPN's Monday Night Football brought to you by the world's most fire-friendly airline, United by the Friendly Skies. NFL.com slash now. Watch the biggest library of NFL videos anywhere. Free. And Navy Federals serving the armed forces and their families. Here across the Hudson River in New Jersey, where the Giants were winners yesterday over Houston, and now Geno Smith trying to leave the Jets to a comeback. He trailed 14 0, five minutes and six seconds into this one. And now they are within five. The folk kickoff again. Rosario takes it and he pitches it back. And it's returned by Rashad Ross. Across the 25-yard line, to where Cutler and the Bears will take over. Every week, what's your plan? Don't let the big star beat you. Brandon Marshall's the star on the Chicago team. Targeted four times, has missed some time with the ankle injury. No receptions. Alshon Jeffrey has brought in six passes. Marshall remains on the sideline here at the start of this drive. Chicago from its own 27. Cutler complete. Tight end Martellus Bennett almost gets a first down. Close to it at 37. John, they haven't picked up a first down the last three drives. No, they have not. And credit that to the Jets. They've had two sacks. They've committed a couple penalties the Bears have. They've fallen way behind in the down and distance. And that's not a good thing to do against this Jet defense. Oh. We get the first down here with Forte backing across the 40. And to the 41-yard line. But this is the time of the game when Rex Ryan blitzes. He creates pressure by blitzing. And he trusts his defensive backs to cover on the back end. This is crunch time. These are the times when Rex Ryan heats you up. Let's see if Allen, number 39, and Walls, number 30, can go from being a contingency man to the future plan here at corner. Jets have gotten sacks on each of the last two drives. And they only rushed four, and Cutler has incomplete as Walls comes up to break it up. What you have to do, you get an opportunity to play, you answer the bell. Nice job in transition. He read the route all the way. Clearly, Marshall is not 100%. Good break on the ball by Walls. Again, second and long. Expect another blitz of some kind from Rex Ryan's Jets. Coming off the corner this time. They go behind it with Jeffrey. Great open field play it's the second time that Antonio Allen, a seventh round pick a couple of years ago, has done that. That makes me proud. I'm not even a Jet coach. What a play. Back-to-back -back plays by these Jet corners. Walls against Marshall, and then it's Allen against Jeffrey. Third down and long. Then it missed the block. Adams, number 24, is checked back in the game, and he lines up on Brandon Marshall in the slot. Play clock at three and two. Need to get across midfield. Cutler puts it up for Jeffrey. Who's got it at the 45-yard line? 
I knew Rex Ryan was going to bring the house, and he did. Third down and long. All-out blitz. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage on the back end. These defensive backs have no help. Again, they use a switch release, and Jeffrey uses that wingspan to beat Antonio Allen. Great call by Mark Tressman. I love the design and the way he's switching the releases of these receivers. How about that throw by Jay Cutler under fire? Gosh, Marshall can go get it. Jeffrey over 100 yards. Jeffrey, I should say. We've seen Marshall do that so many times. I'm telling you. Marshall still without a catch. Forte spins. He'll get two. And here at seven minutes, you start thinking you're down to your last couple of possessions. Imperative for the Jets to limit the Bears to a field goal to keep their hopes alive of winning this game if they can't stop them altogether. There's just been nowhere for Forte to run tonight. That's 11 carries for 19 yards. The Bears have been one-dimensional now for almost eight consecutive quarters. I think Cutler's going to have to throw the football to win. Once again, it's Antonio Allen one-on-one -on -one at the bottom of the screen against Marshall. Second and eight. Jets bring pressure again. Cutler, there's a Marshall catch for the first time tonight. A couple shy of the first down. Marshall continues to play through the paint. Chicago has done an excellent job picking up blitzes, and that's the priority of Mark Tressman. One-on-one -on -one coverage. It's a simple slant route. Marshall has his first catch, but it's a good wrap tackle by Allen. But it's the protection plan of the Bears. It's every meeting, every walk through, every practice, every play. Let's see if the Bears can give it their best protection when they need it the most, because the Jets are going to bring it. Third and two, they go quick, Forte to the edge, got the edge, got the first down. Inside the 30-yard line with five and a half to go, and the left tackle Bushrod on the edge with a good block. What a great call by Mark Tressman, and you use your pro bowl tackle on a bunch crunch. You block down with the two receivers, you pull your left tackle, and you get the ball to Forte, who has made three great short yardage conversions tonight. A couple of first downs via the run for the Bears. That a huge one against Muhammad Wilkerson in this Jets defense. Yeah, one, two, one, six is Mark. Inside of five minutes now, and Forte. Rookie Calvin Pryor made the tackle. This center, Brian De La Puente is underside. He's been cut seven or eight times in this league. He ended up sticking with the Saints to start 44 games, but that's the third very good block I've seen De La Puente throw. And he's out there in relief of Roberto Garza. What a nice job he's done tonight against a litany of looks. There's Garza. Forte rarely comes off the field, is off. And second snap of the night, sixth in the first three weeks for Kadeem Carey, the rookie out of Arizona. He's got it in a big spot here. And is stopped. It's another big hit from Dewan Landry. Dewan Landry, serious spinal cord injury a few years ago. Some thought he'd never play again. He started 82 straight games. He's the mentor of this young Jets secondary. That time a great one-on-one -on -one tackle against the rookie. But third down and four. Got to make something happen if you're the New York Jets. That means blitz. Cutler got away from one, not the second one. Some of these looks I can't even draw on a card. Wilkerson got the worst of that. His pace and Wilkerson were converging on Cutler. They got Jay, but they also got each other. And the Jets' top defender, their MVP last year, slow to get up. And the athletic training staff will come check him out. It's his right shoulder, Mike. Full speed, he ran into the shoulder of Pace. Groggy as he got up. Yeah. 
and uh, players on both sides. And the concern for Wilkerson is uh, he sits up and the Bears players down there too. Injury timeout, be right back for fourth down. Muhammad Wilkerson walked off with the assistance of the training staff. 314 left. The fourth and eight, and the Jets take a timeout. The reason the Jets take a timeout there after the injury is because the play clock was at 30 seconds. The Bears could have run it down to 234, to 244, I should say. And so the Jets trying to maintain the time on the clock here for a timeout. Mike, there's been two key plays in this game by the officials. Don't forget, earlier in this game, Cutler threw a bomb down the field to Alshon Jeffrey, and I thought Walls had perfect coverage. If anything, I thought the penalty was on Jeffrey. And then Cutler fumbles the ball, and Demario Davis picks it up and runs it back for a touchdown. It was ruled a fumble, but they blew the play dead. Goal from 45. And one of the top kickers in the history of the league hits another one. Robbie Gold, third all-time in accuracy. Doing so much of that kicking in the bad weather in Chicago. Makes the lead eight. Coverage from Spider Cam tonight is brought to you by Direct TV. Temperatures falling into the mid-50s on this partly cloudy night. Summer has turned into autumn. And the Jets are going to try to take the ball down the field and tie this game. Down eight with 310 remaining. And it's a place Geno Smith was often last year, needing to bring the Jets back from a deficit in the fourth quarter, and he was successful doing it. What kind of field position to start? Salim Akeem has no return on that good hang time kick with Robbie Gold. Well, you said it, Mike. He's brought the Jets back to win before. Five career game-winning drives. That was all as a rookie. That's saying something. Now, he can't win the game with this drive, but he certainly has a chance to push the game into overtime, but he's been inconsistent. Let's see if he can put it all together when they need it the most. Got to pass protect. This is where Jared Allen has wanted to be. Jared Allen yet to have a sack this season. First 11 quarters from the 20. Allen closing in, hits Smith as he throws, and it's almost intercepted. Jonathan Bostic couldn't get it as Allen was bearing down on the Jets quarterback. Jared Allen lives for these situations. That's why he's going to be a Hall of Fame player. Off the left side, he beats the brick of Shaw Ferguson. He punishes Geno Smith. Ball should be intercept, intercepted. Ferguson might need some help here. Allen coming out wide to set up this move. They're going to run Bilal Powell inside. He'll gain seven. It's third and three. 258 left. Jets with two timeouts. Again. Mike, the Jets depleted at wide receiver. Decker, their number one receiver out of the football game. They're going to have to do it with somebody else. Third down. That is not caught by Curley. Trying to dive and bring it in. Four down territory here with 239. You have two timeouts and the two-minute warning. So if you stop them, you can get the ball back with time left. But the Jets are going to go. Jason Merrow checks in. Their second-round draft choice. Bears have not done a lot structure-wise to create problems. They played two deep, three deep, an occasional snap of man-to-man, -man, and it looks like the double-A gap blitz right here. Smith, fourth down, tight pass is caught by Amaro, and all he's got to do is touch the 30 because it was a touchback on the kickoff. So if any part of the ball is touching the 30, and it is, it's a first down. What a huge catch by a rookie tight end. Comes in short motion, sits down immediately. 
Ooh, interesting. It's where the ball is. Yeah, it's where the ball is where he comes down and they challenge and they can. And with other looks, they might win that challenge. Again, it's where the ball is when his knee or body part, shin, whatever it is, comes down. And if it's shy of the white line, it's almost like a goal line situation. The rule of field of the pass receiver making the line the game. I think he's short, Mike. Yeah. It, it's almost like breaking the plane here, John, because he has to break the plane, the front of the 30-yard line. So where's the ball when Amaro's body part comes down right there? From that angle, it's hard to tell, but it looks a little short. Jerome Boger has looked under the hood at the replay. Again, because it was a touchback on the kickoff, it's almost like the 30-yard line is the plane of the goal line. Where is the ball? It's in his right hand which looks like it comes down shy of the 30. Is there enough to turn After it over? Reviewing, reviewing the play, the rule on the field stands mm. as a completed catch for a first down. Boy. I think the Jets got a break there, Mike. They ended up, that last replay we showed you from the spider cam that goes over the field there is one of the angles they were looking at under the hood. Because that one showed you where the ball was in his right hand. So they said stands, not confirmed, which means there was not enough visual evidence to overturn the call on the field. <laughs> 209 to go. And on the runs, Bilal Powell to the 36, and that should take us to the two minute one. Down eight. Jets need a touchdown and a two to tie this game. Hi, folks. Steve Levy in for Stuart Scott coming up on the GMC Post Game Report. Ray Trent and Steve will join me. We'll break down the big game. We'll each pick a team that's already in trouble this young NFL season. And the top 10 plays from week three in the NFL will count them down. See you on SportsCenter after the game. Up to Mike and John for a fantastic finish. All right, Steve, the winner tonight will be the 13th NFL team to open 2-1. 13 teams will then be 1-3. and three. To go uh, one and two, I should say, to go with those uh, three and zero oh and zero oh and three teams, three apiece. Final two minutes. Smith flush just gets basically back to the line of scrimmage, and John is looking at a secondary that has been banged up by injury last week and this. Well, I'll say right corners Kyle Fuller, Charles Tillman's out. Brock Vereen's another rookie playing safety. They've lost Monday. They've lost Conti. I see Danny McRae out there playing safety. He's a backup. Isaiah Fry, number 31, is the nickel. He just got off the practice squad, and Jennings has had to move from nickel to left corner. Good luck. Nobody moved when Allen came over onto the Jets' side. He got back, wasn't drawn off. Then one of the Jets moved on the right side. False start. Offense, number 66, five-yard penalty, still third down. Watch this, Jared Allen, left side of your screen. He's clearly off sides, but he gets back. And then Willie Colon, 66, thinks the play is over. <laughs> the strength of the Bears right now is in the pass rush. These are free agent acquisitions that have to deliver now. Instead of third and six, it becomes third and 11. There's time for Smith. He looks middle, and it's caught for the first down. Greg Salas at the 40. Salas at the 30. Salas to the 21. Jets very much alive with 1.41 to go. And another safety's hurt for the Bears. Danny McRae injured. They've already lost Ryan Monday. They've lost Chris Conti. Now McRae is down. But the pass rush did not deliver. Geno had plenty of time to throw, and Salas made Fuller miss. Great pass protection. Geno steps up, throws a strike on a deep square into Greg Salas. Kyle Fuller misses a tackle. Down goes McRae. And the rookie Vereen runs him out of bounds. Let's check on McRae. Salas, who had one catch coming into this game, eight receptions last year. Again, more action because of the injuries you see McRae just got tied up there as Curley was coming back to block him. He's now sitting up. So let's just get a little housekeeping here, John. The Bears lost a timeout 
on the challenge. And because they have an injured player in the last two minutes, they are charged with a timeout. So Chicago's down to one. McCray is up. Ahmad Dixon, 36 for the Bears, is in. He's a rookie out of Baylor, signed off of Minnesota's practice squad. He played a bit on special teams for the Bears last week. This is unbelievable. I've never seen a secondary this depleted in the third regular season game. Let's see if the Jets can capitalize. They have really struggled in the red zone tonight. And this is about to be Dixon's first snap playing defense in the NFL. Running the ball is not out of the ordinary here. You have plenty of time with two timeouts left. This is the seventh time the Jets have been inside the 25 tonight. From the 20, Geno Smith is swing it to Bilal Powell. No place to go. The first safety, Brock Vereen, rallying to give him nowhere to go. And another tackle by Fuller. Marty Morningwig likes double moves. Out on that jet practice field the other day, Decker ran several. He's out of the football game. Nelson at the bottom of the screen, the bigger target, the quicker Turley, number 11, is up top. Along with the speedster, Salim Akeem. Curley in motion. Smith. Ad living. Flag is down as he throws it away. Flag thrown in the secondary as Smith was out of the pocket. The quarterback was outside the pocket and got the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. Thus, there's no intentional grounding. But the preliminary signal from the back judge is defensive holding. Prior to the pass, holding, defense, number 57. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. It's Bostic. Let's take a look at him. End of the play, number 57 against Cumberland. Wow. That's, that's, that's not a call I agree with. For the Jets, it's first and 10 with a minute 26 left. They need a touchdown and a two-point conversion. All these backups in the secondary. As Smith pressured by Allen, spins away from Allen. Gino looks, fires end zone. Deflected and almost caught by Curley, but incomplete. Kyle Fuller again where the ball is and Jared Allen had Geno Smith in his grasp Allen on the left side of your screen beats Ferguson again and Geno has a presence to get out of it once again as you say Mike Kyle Fuller has a chance to end the football game <laughs> and Allen is hungry he's working on one of the best left tackles the Brickashaw Ferguson minute 17 left Jets can get a first down at the four. Smith pumping, throwing underneath, and it's complete to the 10-yard line with Powell. And the clock will turn with a minute eight to go. And that will be stopped as the Jets will take their second of three timeouts. This will be an interesting conversation, Mike. Geno Smith and Marty Morningwig on the sideline. You really don't have that tight end to isolate outside and mismatch anybody. And you really don't have a receiver, but the Bears don't have anybody either. To cover him, except for Fuller. Now, it is a four-down territory, so obviously I think Marty Morningwig is going to put Gino in a check-with-me situation. Now you're at the night. This is one play. The red zone, the Jets have not done well the last two weeks. We watched all their red zone plays in the first two weeks. They've been very sloppy there. Well, they've used some bizarre play selection tonight. Here's an empty backfield set. Keep an eye on David Nelson on the right side of your screen to enter from the bunch formation up top. Third and five and four down territory. And the Bears will take their final timeout. Mark Tressman saw something that his defensive coaches did not like. He's quick to take a timeout. Look at all the new players in that Bear lineup. Brock Vereen over there getting instruction. Dixon, number 36, who just got here. 
and the ever-present Lance Briggs is between all of them. So you have some novices, some guys just getting started with the perennial pro bowler, Lance Briggs. This ought to be interesting. This happened last week when they lost all these bodies in Brock Farina. Safety had to go play the nickel corner position, and they were figuring out what coverages do you know from your safety training that you can use here, and it's almost making it up in the dirt on the sidelines to find out what he could play. And Bilal Powell has just checked in, but in these no-back sets, if Geno Smith sees a loose coverage box, they will audible to a quarterback trap. Believe it or not, they trust Smith as a runner in the red zone more than most teams. Jets have struggled in the red zone. Third and five, Smith throwing, it's incomplete. Tried to get it to David Nelson and the game comes down to this snap with a minute four left. They come with a blitz, they play some one-on-one -on -one coverage. Gino gets rid of it, Kyle Fuller. In tight coverage. Again, Nelson at the top of the screen in his empty formation. Look for him to enter from right to left. Scrambles get lined up to Curley in the slot. They do so with Vereen. Fourth and five, game on the line. End zone shot, Curley catches it out of bounds. No flag thrown. And the Bears somehow put together enough secondary players to survive. And Brock Farine, who scrambled over to cover Curley in that situation, comes up with the play. Brock Farine, Dixon, <laughs> Fuller, three rookies in the secondary. That is clearly incomplete. Credit defensive coordinator Mel Tucker. Going on the road two weeks in a row with a depleted defense and having the guts to call an all-out blitz, and they get it done. That play was similar to, but not as egregious as, Luke Keekley and Carol and Charlotte on the Monday night with Rob Gronkowski carrying him out of the back of the end zone. No flag called there. You certainly saw Vereen just put his helmet in Curley's breastplate and carry him out. But that ball was almost thrown where it had to be caught out of bounds. And the Bears will come away with... Uh, more injuries, but a victory. 27 to 19 here, and the Jets will fall to one and two. And Chicago at two and one will get ready for Green Bay at Soldier Field on Monday night, on Sunday. Excuse me, Mike. Jets had the ball six times in the Bears' red zone tonight. Just got one touchdown. Yep. The two interceptions. One of them was in the red zone. One of them returned for a touchdown on the first play of the game. Red zone offense, not good tonight for New York. Bears have been good of late on Monday night. They've won 12 of the last 15 Monday nighters. The Jets, meantime, on a short week, have to turn around and get ready for another team that likes to throw it. The Lions come in. And that continues this uh, rough stretch of big-name quarterbacks that the Jets, they had Rodgers last week, Cutler this week. Next week, it's Stafford and the Lions, followed by Rivers. Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. It's a, those are 4,000-yard <laughs> throwers. Wow. There are plenty of chances to win tonight, though. It's the second timeout the Jets had called. They didn't have a second timeout. They, they, the game uh, should have kept rolling there. The Bears snapped the ball before it was marked ready for play. In position when the ball was last snapped, second down. Antonio Holmes yelling his best formation in football. It's a victory play. Yeah. Yeah. They'll snap it one more time and this thing will be done. Chicago scored the first 14. The Jets made some mistakes. They could not convert to touchdowns in the red zone. And despite emptying the bench with every available DB for the second straight week, the Bears defense with that one familiar face left who's been in Chicago for a while, Lance Briggs. Able to hold off the Jets, 27 to 19.
Bears get this one by eight, and they join the Lions atop the division at two and one. Jets fall to one and two. Buffalo and New England leave the AFC East, excuse me, by a game. The GMC post game's coming up on Sports Center. Steve Levy and company getting set on the field to bring you all the reaction from here in New Jersey. With John Gruden, Lisa Salters, and the rest of our Monday night team, Mike Tirico, so long from New Jersey. Bears win.